It was a long time ago, but I was dating a guy who lived about five hours away from me. I made many drives back and forth to visit him out of state and often found myself singing along to this certain artist's songs. They felt fitting as I drove to Tennessee and looked out at the sprawling green south. And the relationship obviously ended and I couldn't be happier now. But, you know, girls have such a unique relationship with music. We feel so much. And I'm not saying that guys don't have feelings, but girls can just put on a song and let it define her life, love, loss, relationships, everything. And I have good memories of looking out my window, being happy in my relationship and just taking in her music, which felt very reflective of that season in my life. And some of today's guest songs are bookmarks of that time. Since then, she's come out with more beautiful music. One of her latest songs, She Chose Me, on her new album, Baytown, is actually incredibly timely to the abortion debate going on in this country. It's like another bookmarker for all of her listeners, including me. We'll also get into this guest's thoughts on fellow country stars like Carrie Underwood coming under attack in the last year on social media for liking anti-mask mandate posts and Morgan Wallen hinting that there could be a racism problem in country music. We'll also discuss her healing process after finding out that her mom almost aborted her and behind the scenes drama with country artists and their labels. Give a big yeehaw, cute servitives, to the cutest cinnamon roll ever, country music superstar Ray Lynn on The Spillover. Let's just dive in, Miss Ray Lynn. Yes. I want the truth. How country are you actually? I mean, do you drive a truck, live in the woods, fish? Same. I don't live in the woods at the moment, but one day I will live in the woods, okay? Um, I do drive a truck. I Well, now that I've become a mom, I have a Tahoe, but that's okay. still like kind of that's a big... fair. But I do have our truck. My, my husband drives the truck that I grew up driving, which is my race red Ford F-150. So it's still kind of sexy. I know. I miss driving it. I I take it out like once a week. But because I'm a mom, I got the I got the Tahoe now. But I actually love it. Like it's fun. But it's not like a truck. But you're not out there. Are are you a hunter or anything like that? I mean I've gone hunting. I, the thing about me, I just I like to dress up and do it, but I'm not really good at being quiet. Like I'm just like That's okay, what that's bored. exactly my I mean, problem. I, and it's fun. But I would just rather let you know, Josh go hunting and me just hang. Yeah. You know? It's fun to sit and like get the cute picture and the selfie or whatever. I'll be a poser for a second. But like, I enjoy it. But I just like, I don't know. I just don't like sitting and be quiet. No, I'm the or, same or waking way. waking up at 430 in the morning unless it's to feed my child. I'm not going to just wake up. No, you know? absolutely but. not. And see, this is my thing is I always feel like there are some people in the country music industry and you can speak on yes. this. But do you feel like some people and you're like a girl, so that's yeah. different, but definitely guy country stars that are just they kind of like are fakers when it comes to the country <laughs> lifestyle. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, especially like when you see their houses, you're like, hmm, that's funny. Really? Yeah. Not, I mean, not all of them. Well, you you talk about. Um, I think it's just funny when they like sing about. I see what you're saying. And then it's yes. like, and then you like live in a community. Yeah. I don't. Yes. But. OK. Because. Not being mean. But yes. Well, it, it reminded me when you sing in fake girl town. Yes. I mean, is it safe to say that you're describing girls? I mean, you're talking about like women being catty. Is it about Nashville? Well, for me, that that song came from a place of I grew up in Baytown, Texas, which is outside of Houston. And in the town that I grew up, everybody was rooting for each other. Like there was not like this competition kind of vibe. And so when I moved to Nashville, I... You know, if I'm just one of those people. I'm like, oh, yay, we we had the same dream. This is awesome. And then I quickly realized that that wasn't everybody's, you know, intent when they were become your friend. And, you know, it took me a while to find real girlfriends. I mean, it probably took me like six or seven years, actually. And I, I think it's through. the hardest to make friends as an adult, too. It really is. And, and then you really realize, like, I wish I could go back to my younger self every single day and just tell them, like, why the heck do you care what that person thinks about you? Or why do you want to be that person's friend? Like, because now being married for six years and especially having a daughter, I could care less who likes me or care less about, like, just like the little things that you used to care about. You know, just it doesn't it just doesn't matter. And so, but yeah, it did. It did take I wrote definitely wrote it about Nashville. 
So what kinds sure. of things have you experienced? Because in the song, you talk about like girls being catty. They're talking crap about you in the bathroom. Then they come out and they act all fake. I oh, mean, yeah. are these real things that you've oh, that experienced? that was a real experience for me. Yeah. So talk about that. What Was yeah, it a, a so music was, event? Yeah, it was just a, it was a party that I was at. And, um, and I walked in. And you know how you know this as a girl, you know this. You know how when you walk in and you're like, I don't feel something doesn't feel right. I feel like somebody's been talking about me. Or, you know, people like look at you really weird. Oh, yeah. That's how it was. And I was just like. What the hell did I do? Like, that's kind of what I was thinking. And so, yeah, I quickly figured out after I left kind of what had happened. And honestly, like, it's, um, I think the one thing that I do love about Fake Girl Town is I wrote it about my experience moving to Nashville. But so many girls, when they move away from their friend group or their hometown and they move to a new place, they experience that. And some people experience that in their hometown. They Maybe they weren't the popular girl in school and they feel like they live in this fake girl town in their hometown. So it's been a song that's really resonated to my fans a lot. Now, you performed at Turning Point USA's yes. America Fest. We were so excited yeah. to have you. It was fabulous. You're obviously conservative. Are you ever afraid that being open about your conservative values will hurt your career in any way? Has it created any problems with other country stars? I... This has like been, I think the hardest thing that's been for me in this last year is feeling like we can't just all get along. And I personally, nobody said anything to me. And and if they did, I would be really disappointed because I've been the biggest fan of everybody in this industry since I was 17 years old. I've lived in Nashville for almost, you know, 10 years. And to me, I just kind of, I kind of miss it when we all didn't know what everybody believed and everybody just loved each other, but that's not the case anymore. And I just feel like as we're in this, like just the world we're in right now, it's important to speak and believe what we believe and whatever comes of that comes of that. I don't feel like we should be afraid because what is that? I mean, a lot has changed for me after having a, a baby, after having da Daisy, because what changed for you. I think when I see her, I'm like, I never want her to be afraid to speak up. I never want her to be afraid to believe in something. And that's kind of what did it for me. I'm like, you know, if if I'm afraid, like, I don't want my daughter to see that. I don't want my daughter to see me worried about, you know, what I post or what I say. And and the thing about me is I'm not a very polarizing person. I'm No, I don't think you are yeah, at all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I... I really do love everybody. I have a heart for people. I've always been that way. So to put my heart in a box, you just can't do that. And and if you're going to do that, then you really don't know me. So if you're going to not be my friend because I am conservative, then to me, I'm just like, then you missed out on having a really great friendship. Speaking of babies, your song, She Chose Me, wow. Thank you. Resonated Thank you. with so many young women, blew up on TikTok of all of these girls sharing their stories of deciding to choose life, which was so empowering. Like, that's true women empowerment. And I, yeah. I love that you tell the story about how your mom actually made an appointment to abort you, but then she obviously yes. chose not to go through with it. And so I'm curious when it comes to the pro-choice side of the debate, you know, the psychological damage of abortion basically never comes up. They gloss over no, it yeah. like it's a very easy decision. Mm -hmm. And so just the mere fact that your mom almost aborted you, was that painful? You know, did she struggle with that? Did you struggle with that story after finding out? When did you find out? So I found out in my, oh my God, it's crazy to say mid-20s. I hate saying that. Um, <laughs> I found out like four years ago, um, I just, I started doing like my research. I started asking my mom a lot of questions. I was like, hey, when did you get married? When was I born? Like I started doing all that kind of stuff. Doing the math. And doing the math. And I quickly realized that my mom, you know, got married way after she had me. And so I started asking some questions. And when I found that out, I honestly, it was a hard pill for me to swallow because I was thinking, oh my gosh, I almost didn't exist. My career almost didn't exist. My husband's wife almost didn't exist. My baby almost didn't, didn't have a life. Like I just started going through all the things that wouldn't be here if I wasn't here. And not in like a selfish way. I was just thinking, and then I was thinking about every other person. That your life has impacted. That has, that has, my life has impacted. But then I was thinking about, 
all the other kids that are like me that might have not had that choice. And so it's just like, it really just hit me. And I went through a lot of therapy, a lot of time with Jesus. And I, you know, talked a lot about it through with my husband through. And it was just like, and then I wrote this song. Cause, and, and the reason I love She Chose Me so much is I have so much compassion for my mom. Like, the fact that she even got to the place where she felt like she had to do that broke my heart. Yep. And I feel like that's what we need to talk about. We need to talk yes. about these mothers and how much they're going through. And to make that dis- – it makes me, like, want to cry when I think about it because – the fact that my mom like even got to that place breaks my heart because she's such a strong woman. And so that's why when I wrote this song, I was I wanted it to be kind of a loophole for to talk about this this, you know, subject and also in a way that doesn't, you know, if you did make that decision, you don't feel like you're the worst person in the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot, like we, like you said, nobody talks about the psychological damage that happens. And I really do believe that this song has such a purpose. But I love this song because it's written in such a non-judgmental way. I and, agree. Um, and I think that that's the way we should approach it because this is just a hard subject. It's full of forgiveness. It is. Um, it's gentle. Thank you. There's, It's graceful. And tell me about the first time that you played it for your mom because I know there had to have been a moment privately probably that you played it for her she so when I said I didn't I didn't want to play it for her in person because I knew that she'd be hysterical um and I told her about the idea that I had I said so I had this idea for a song but I hadn't written it yet and she said well that sounds beautiful well if you write it and you figure out how to write it because I was like I don't know how I'm gonna write it but would you be okay? Because I was kind of nervous. Like, even though it's my story, technically, I didn't, I didn't like know how to write that for my mom. It's also her story. It, it's her story too. And I also don't want to like throw her under the bus. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. And so I told her about the, the idea that I had with it. And so then when we went in and wrote it, I mean, I was just a ball of tears. I remember when I sang the demo, I was, it gave me the same feeling that Love Triangle gave me, the song I read about my parents' divorce. Okay. I was listening to that song for the first time the other day, that yes. song in particular. And yes. I said to my girlfriend, I said, is this song about your parents getting divorced? And yes. I said, oh my gosh, this is about to wreck me. Yes. And I was like, wow, you have a beautiful way of, um, I don't know how, how you would describe that. But like, I did not expect, you know, a, a title like Love Triangle. Yeah. You do things that you're not expecting with your music. Thank you. And that was really interesting to be Thank listening you. and be like, oh, my gosh, this is not about like t- being in love with two guys. No. This is about <laughs> this is about like going back and forth to your mom's house, to your dad's house yeah. with divorced parents. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Yes. yes. And so when I wrote She Chose Me, I had that same feeling that I had when I wrote Love Triangle. And I wrote Love Triangle when I was 18. And so when I like when I felt like, oh, this song is special, that's how I felt about She Chose Me. And it's been getting the same response, especially like when you see the amount of videos that have been made on TikTok and Instagram of women putting their story to the song. I think the ones that have actually gotten me recently are the ones of adoptions. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just a puddle watching these. It's just it's so beautiful. Was there any pushback in Nashville circles about you releasing a pro-life song? Was there anyone that said, I don't think you should do this? No, I didn't. I didn't. And honestly, like, if they did, I I wouldn't care. I would still have done it. Because it's, to me, people, if you are a songwriter and you are an artist, you should be able to write what you want. That's what I I think makes a true artist. Johnny Cash wrote some of the most crazy songs about, like, depression and alcoholism. People write songs about really dark things. And people write songs about things that they've gone through. Once, Once artists stop writing what they've gone through, then... What what's the point of being an artist if I'm not going to write something that is genuine to me and is my experience? Because if you write from your heart, you are going to impact somebody else because we're all the same. And so that's yeah, that's why I think it's funny. I'm just like, once you start telling people how to write music, that's not a good thing. I agree. And I I feel like a lot of uh, artists now lately are just kind of selling out that aspect. They're losing that part of themselves. Just, okay, well, what's going to become a single? What's the easiest way to get streams, make money, even though if it compromises my values a little bit? And I'm all about having a good time. Like I have songs that are rowdy and fun and country and not, you know, as 
I mean, I, I guess as contra- controversial as, which is so funny that this is even controversial, which is so funny. It shouldn't but, be controversial. Yeah, it shouldn't be controversial telling your story. But all that being said, like, I have the songs like Love Triangle and She Chose Me, but I also have songs that are like so rowdy and fun. I I just played them like here. So it's just like, I, I, th- I think it's just about just having a mix of both. I love artists that can do it all. And I don't know. I just never want to limit myself. Who are some artists that you respect that you, in your eyes, do do it all? Oh my gosh! In country music or in anything, any, anything, any genre. I, I've always loved Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton is one of my favorites because she is such just a light in this world, and everybody who's met her has genuinely left just being feeling so incredible about themselves. So Dolly, and when I met Dolly, I bawled my eyes out like a baby. Like it was really funny. <laughs> what did you say to her? Um, I remember telling her, I was like, hi, I'm Raylan. And she goes, oh, I know. You're nominated tonight. It was at the ACs. I was like, how did you know that? I was just like <laughs> so blown away. And um, yeah, it's it was it was awesome. And you know another person that I've always really liked his music? Um, and he's super authentic. And he's always been that way. And I just love people that are kind of like doing their own thing. Is I remember seeing Eric Church. Mm. And this is before he was like, or I was like, he only had like a couple hits on the radio, but you go to a show and it's like sold out. And there's so many people and he's just, he's so, I think he's incredible. He really caters to his fans. Yeah, I, and I think that's important. You should cater to your fans. That's what you should do. What do you think is worse, in your opinion, celebrities who openly support super leftist ideas like yeah. abortion and socialism, things like that, or conservative celebrities who stay in the closet and hide the fact that they're conservative? Oh my gosh. I think it, I almost think it's worse to hide yourself because you should never feel like, and this is the thing, you don't have to get on your social media and post, you know, things every day about who you vote for or this or that, but you can, you should be able just to talk about what you believe in and not feel like you're going to get canceled. I hate cancel culture. It completely breaks my heart because we're all living nervous about what we're going to say or what we're going to post, what's behind me. Don't, you know, make sure everything's perfect before we put it up. So for me, I would definitely say people that can't feel like they can't speak up or talk about what they believe in and what they love, because that just that's awful. That's not what America's about. I feel like the idea of cancel culture is suffocating as a normie, okay, like me, but I cannot imagine what the pressure is like as a celebrity wondering, am I going to be trending on Twitter negatively today? Yeah. Is is that a real thing that you that's is scary that you live with every day? I I haven't had anything crazy ever happen to me when it comes to cancel culture, and I'm very grateful. But yeah, I mean, when I put out "She Chose Me," I was nervous about that, um, and the fact that I was that's what I kept telling my husband. I was like, the fact that I'm scared is speaks volumes about cancel culture because I literally released a song about my life. And I'm nervous about releasing it for my fans to hear. And I've never been nervous about my fans hearing anything that's come from my heart. Yeah, but I've, to me, I think that, have you heard that one song? I hate to talk about Justin Bieber, but I love Justin Bieber. But the, the <laughs> We song talk about Justin that, Bieber. But that song where he's talking about, you know, we're all have the fear of getting canceled. Like nobody can make mistakes. Right. Nobody can do anything. Like I'm honestly, but I don't have that fear anymore because honestly, like, there's so many people that believe the way that we do. And and honestly, when you lose some, you gain some. And I feel like if I lose a few fans because I'm speaking my heart, I'm okay with that. Because you genuinely weren't, a, I guess, a fan at the beginning. Because honestly, I'm just being who I am. And two, like I said, I have the biggest heart ever. And we can hang out and party and do whatever. Like this, because I, you know, believe the way I believe shouldn't. Put me in a box. Well, speaking of things that you're like, this shouldn't even be controversial. This shouldn't even be controversial. Or shouldn't even be political, you know, and I know you can't speak for Carrie Underwood and what she does or doesn't believe, but I did find it shocking that just because she liked anti-mask posts or anti-mandate posts, people were trying to cancel her. Was that shocking for you to see? It's just, to me, it's just funny. I'm like, we can't like anything. You can't comment. I mean, I remember commenting on one of my friend's posts and... I got ripped a new one. Like somebody was just like, oh, I mean, I just got it so in trouble. And they were just like, you need to cancel her. You need to cancel her. And I was For just, what? Can you say what I it was? I almost like canceled it. So I went to um, one of Sean Foyt's Let Us Worship events. Yeah. 
um, in Nashville. And I remember being like super anxious because I was like, okay, I'm in a crowd full of people. This was like the height of the pandemic too. And everybody, you know, people were just taking videos. And I was like, this, this is going to blow up in Nashville. You know, somebody's going to be upset about this. And honestly, I, everybody has their different views on it. Personally, I needed that night. I needed, 2020 was a hard year. We, nobody was doing shows. Nobody was even around each other. And that night of worship, like, meant so much to me because I felt like, oh my gosh, we're going to get through this. And also, too, just to be together with people that are believing in something bigger than ourselves and just like believing more in more than and, big government. Yeah, and it was just like, <laughs> it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I think about all the, you know, people that have committed suicide over the last couple of years, all the mental health issues. Like I had anxiety going, I was had anxiety going there. And I'd never have anxiety around big crowds. But the fact that I had anxiety, like, showed me that, like, oh, my gosh, this is this is crazy. Like, I can't imagine. Did somebody... you feel brainwashed? A little bit. Like, I, I just felt like I couldn't believe that I even felt that way. You know what I mean? And so but then I remember posting that I was there. I didn't even I didn't even post anything crazy. I like posted like everybody worshiping and singing. And it was so beautiful. And it was exactly what my heart needed. And. Then, you know, I guess me commenting and saying, thank you for coming to Nashville. I had an awesome time. Like, but it was, you know, the funny thing is, is it was a blip in time and next. Like nobody, nobody really said anything after that. People got over that quick. People got over it quick. Now there's rumors. And by the way, this could be complete bogus. I'm sure it is. But there are rumors or maybe it's just wishful thinking from fans that Taylor Swift might be getting the first ever Nashville residency. What's that? What's the Nashville? Like, you know how in Vegas, like Adele and Celine Dion will do these long residencies. Yeah. How would you feel about Nashville, whether that is true or not, Nashville, those starting residencies for artists, would you be like, oh, please, no, we're already the bachelorette capital of the world. Oh, my God. Actually, I think that's brilliant. That's brilliant. I did in Nashville. Okay, it's a little more honky tonk version, but I did a residency at Old Red, Blake Shelton, who I love. Blake Shelton's bar downtown, and I played every week for six weeks. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of a, that's every like a, week a mini for residency. Six weeks, and I was pregnant, girl. I was a big pregnant, and I was just dancing in a bar, having a good time. Everybody else was drinking for me. It was awesome. But I think that that's awesome. I think. I, I love that, actually. I think that Nashville's growing so much. Like, I think that I know where I'm going, and I'm like, wait, I now will make a wrong turn because I don't recognize a building that just came up. Have you been to Nashville? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nashville is awesome. It is awesome. Um, what is your favorite part about it, you think? My favorite thing about Nashville is you are in the city, and it feels completely different than when you just go 20 minutes out like we live 20 minutes outside of Nashville and it completes it's so different than like downtown Nashville but I also love Nashville because it's just so many different people and it's you can generally tell it's the heart of country music like country music fans love coming to Nashville it's become such a hot spot and going downtown on the weekends is one of the most entertaining things that you will ever see I mean yeah I counted 10 bachelorette parties in 30 seconds. Like, not even kidding. That should be the drinking game. Yes, that should be the drinking game. (laughs) You'd be hammered. I mean, not even kidding. Like, downtown Nashville is crazy. Sometimes I just enjoy just, like, driving down there at night, like, if I'm, like, around, because I'm just like, this is awesome. I love people. (laughs) You know, speaking of Nashville just being the country music capital and everything and and who the fans are of country music and stuff— were you, what were your feelings about the Dixie Chicks and Lady Antebellum changing their names to Lady A and the Chicks? I don't know. I just, I think what, I think the thing about all of this is that we all feel like we have to do that. Does that make sense? But like, but, you're, I, yeah. but country music fans, I feel yeah. like, would be the one exception yeah. where you don't have to succumb to that stuff. I don't know. I'm just thankful that I didn't have to do anything like that, you know? And I, yeah, <laughs> I feel like, you know, um, there's also a lot of record labels and stuff operating in Nashville and people don't really talk about in the country music industry how vital a manager's role is mm-hmm. in an artist's success. And it seems like so many artists would love to be more outspoken, but they're kind of hindered by not their fear of cancel culture, their manager's yeah. fear of cancel culture. 
So I wanted to ask you, why do artists work with people who mute their voice? I don't know. Honestly, I've I have friends that I know that that's personally something that they deal with. And it breaks my heart because your manager is supposed to be you're the CEO of your company and your manager is like the vice president. They're the ones that make sure everything happened to make sure what you want to be out there happens. Right. And um, and I think it's as a manager, you should, of course, protect your artists. You should always tell them these are the pros. These are the cons. But at the end of the day, if you say, OK, I want to do this. They're going to do that for you and they're going to back you up 100 percent. That's a great manager. How much say does an artist actually have when they're choosing their team with their label? I they have a they have a big say. I mean, I've never been in a like a controlling situation like that. Um, luckily, I've had the best man. I have the best manager. She is so incredible. Um, and so she's just always backed me up 24 seven. But they I mean, I know but I know of artists that don't have control. They sign to a label and then the label's like, hey, this is your manager. This is your that. But that does. I don't know if that happens in country music necessarily. I think that that happens more like in pop music and stuff. Like I have a few friends that are in pop music and it's like they signed to this label and it's like, here's your whole team. And luckily, I never had that. I got to pick and choose who I wanted to work with, which is really awesome. That's almost that's like terrifying because, yeah, you're right. They could ha- not share any of the same values, not even want the same type of brand or feel with and your two, music. You don't have to have the same values. You just have to support what your artist wants because it's, right. their, it's their art. It's their life. Morgan Wallen is another alumni from The Voice. He's had an interesting last year, obviously. <laughs> His alumni. I, th- I think it's so funny that he's on The Voice. I forget that he was on The Voice. Right? Yeah. So the... I mean, so much has been said about his stuff. Like, we don't have to go into that. But I I have one question for you. How did you take it when he said that maybe his music after the incident was charting so high because there was a race, a racial racist problem in country music? I. I don't view, first of all, country music is not they're not racist. I mean, I. Personally, I've never seen that. You also have artists of all colors. Yeah, art, yeah, we have artists of all colors, and I've just never experienced that. And so, but, I mean, I I think that Morgan, I mean, it's just, Morgan's a really good human deep down, and he made a mistake. And, but, I mean, he's he's done so well since then. I know, it was so crazy, because when his music started, like, going to the next level, I knew that that's going to be what they what they said, but I don't know. What what is your take as a conservative woman about this narrative that sexism in the country music industry is why female country artists have trouble charting lately? I I do think that it's been harder for women in country music. Elaborate I mean, on I, that. It's I mean I've seen so many girls. I mean I've been doing this for almost ten years and. And you could not say that it's been harder for women. Like, that's all I have to say. And I don't know what that is. But, I mean, it's it has been harder for women. And, and you're I mean, talking, do you think in general, all genres of music or in country I would just say I would just say country music. It's gotten better, though, in the last couple of years. I will say that. It's, I mean, you have Carly Pierce. You have Gabby Barrett. You have so many artists that are, you know, doing well now. But back when I was on radio tour, like, 10 years ago, I remember, like, it was... We were all fighting for that spot. And I was like, why are 10 girls fighting for a number one spot when we can all be on the chart? We all have great music. We all and I still haven't cracked that code. I don't know what it is, but I will say it has gotten better. So I'm thankful for the tide turning and women are doing way better in country music now, which is great. I We can see it. I mean, Baytown alone, the country music fans don't let that happen. It's just radio. But I've you know, with Baytown alone, we've had. 100 million streams based just on my record and it just came out so it's That's just amazing. The, the fans are there it's just you know so do you think that it's more of a radio problem there's gatekeeping going on with country music and radio yeah it's just i don't i honestly don't know what it is it's to me it's just kind of disheartening but to but to artists even care right now about radio i'm just curious because everything has gone so into streaming so is it more important to you to chart because of radio plays or because you're streaming on TikTok and Spotify? Honestly, I think that radio, unfortunately, still has a big part of that major success in a country artist's career. Like, it, it just is the fact. But we are seeing a tide turning. Like, 
girl, you know, people are blowing up on TikTok and now their songs are doing really well on country radio because of that familiarity. So I think it's all kind of playing together and they're using the data from these social media platforms and from streaming and they're adding it and taking it to these country radio programmers like, okay, look, this is what people want to hear. And at first, I don't know if these programmers knew how to take this information because they're like, okay, what does that mean for my town? Because I mean, not every programmer, what's going to do well in Phoenix is not going to do well in Baytown, Texas. So it's like, I understand that. But also too, you can't discredit the fact that these artists are streaming. You, You have to take that feedback and do something with it. And so I think it's definitely helping with with country music, well, with females now. I know that it, it was a little bit, I, I think people are way too scared be- to say anything negative yeah. necessarily outright, but um, I've heard that there was a little bit of prickly feelings with some artists, just the fact that they agreed with Taylor Swift re-recording her album so she could own the rights. Mm-hmm. What felt a little icky to some artists was, okay, well, so now you get to chart again. You know, you get to do this again. J- did you feel like that was unfair? I mean, hell, I'd love to chart again. <laughs> and I mean, I, that's just my opinion. I'm like, if I could put out the same album, own the masters and chart again, you if you didn't want that to happen, I mean, whatever. But that's just my opinion. I do you mean, feel like, like things are going to change because of what she's done with artists owning yeah, the rights I mean, to their music? I've, you know, your music is owned by your label for so many years, and then you have the right to re-release it. And that's all she did. I could re-release songs that after the contract period ends, I could re-release it and then own the full master and make money, you know, on the whole shebang. Why wouldn't I want to do that? Actually, I think it's brilliant. But that's my personal opinion. If she wants to do it, this is my thing. You go ahead, girl. Like, I, I don't think that that's, I actually think it's kind of awesome, personally. I love that you are so close with the Aldeans. Oh, they're so sweet. How have they becoming so outspoken in the last year inspired or impacted you? I think, first of all, I just love hanging out with them. They are just genuine people. And I've, me and Brittany have been friends for a while. And honestly, like, it's just meant a lot to somebody like me because it's shown me that, you know, we don't, we can all agree to disagree. And me and we like me and Brittany have the same heart for people. And so I I'm definitely not as like crazy outspoken as as Brit is, but I respect the hell out of Brit. And I think I hope that like people just start getting more courage to be more outspoken. And and she to me, she does it in such a way of and I, I think it's awesome. <laughs> If you were stranded somewhere like the middle of the woods and you were with Brittany Aldine, Kelsey Ballerini and Miranda Lambert, who do you count on to lead you guys out of whatever predicament you're in? Oh, my gosh. Probably Miranda, because she would just like she's a you know, she's she's raising hell wherever. So she would just, <laughs> she would make sure we were going to all get out alive. You know what I mean? I think that and Brett would be a great person to like, you know, I don't know. That's I think Miranda for sure. And Britt. Britt would come up with a strategy. Hey, what about me? I could do it. You could do it. I like that. I like that. myself? Because I think I would do a great job. So, okay, before we end this episode, I love your song, God Made Girls. Yes. Um, That's one of my favorite songs of yours. But I was wondering if you could do something for me. What if you sang, instead of saying God Made Girls, you sing God Made Squirrels? Oh, I've done that before. You have? I thought this was an original idea. No, it's like... And so once one person said it to me and I was like, God made girls. No, no, God made squirrels. He stood back and told the nuts, I'm about to rock your world. <laughs> and God made squirrels. So amazing. That song blew up on TikTok, which was hilarious, too. Really? Oh, I, yeah. I, that song? It, yes. Do you think if you released that in 2022? I think it'd be totally different. Wouldn't it be different? Yes, it would. I almost got canceled for singing about a pretty skirt. I was like, what the hell, y'all? Wait, what was wrong with that part? I don't know. I don't know. People were crazy. Okay, so as but, I, I, Hey, it went platinum. It sold over a million copies. So heck great. yeah. Okay, so before we end this, um, I, I ha- there's a lot of cute conservatives who work in industries that don't allow them to be vocal about their conservative beliefs. What is one piece of advice you have for them to stand against mandates or stand up against values in their own industry, whatever that is? I would just say push the limit in in the way that you can, but also just be authentic. Like I, it's hard when it's, when it's your paycheck. It's hard when it's, I mean, it's 
I can't imagine somebody telling me, oh, you can't believe this way. You can't speak about this. But just stand firm. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're not you're not alone. And I think the best thing that we can all find is community. I think that that's what's kept me sane throughout this whole time, these last couple of years, is finding a community that sticks by me. And when I'm feeling super alone, because it's so easy to feel alone. When you talk to that community, they're like, you're not alone. We're in this together. And I have a I have like a group of friends, like eight girls, and we're all in the industry. And you have a group chat? I have a group chat. I love what's, group chats. What's the group chat called? Um, uh, actually, I don't, it doesn't have a name. We what? need to, we need to, to name, name it. it. Um, actually, we do need a name. I forgot a name. Um, but anyways, I love it because we all like will randomly text and be like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling this way. Please give me some, you know, hope or whatever. And we just start like shooting each other, you know, encouragement. encouragement. And that's that's the thing. That's what's going to get us out of this is all of us sticking together. And I think it's just super important to find your community that it's going to help you through this time. Buy Baytown, stream Baytown. Please. And what else can we look forward to from you this year? Well, I've definitely been putting out more music. And I don't know. I'm I'm pretty excited about 2022 because I feel like it's going to be a beautiful canvas that looks different than anything that I've done. So I'm really excited. Thank you so much for coming on this bill over Raylan. Yes, thank you for having me. How crazy was that story Raylan shared about getting pushback for posting that she went to a big church service during the pandemic? And I love that she's made such good friends in the Aldines. In hindsight, I wish I would have asked her about becoming friends with Candace Owens, too, but I guess we'll just have to cover that next time. Subscribe to The Spillover if fascinating interviews without the leftist propaganda is your jam. If you love Raylan, leave a five-star review that says God made squirrels, okay? If you know, you know. We're back with new episodes of The Spillover every Every single Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific and midnight Eastern. You can also watch each episode, including this one with Ray Lynn on the Politics YouTube. I'm Alex Clark, and this is The Spillover. Love you, mean it. Bye. Big dog status, now I'm a big dog, bitch. I pull up on